Has it something that in, in your relationship either of you have acknowledged at one point and brought up? Sex? Are you attracted to me at all? Like us talking about sex? Us talking about yeah, sex together? That, that Can guys and girls be just friends? Can they do it in spite of attraction? What if you find yourself in the friend zone? What about friends with benefits? What? As you can see, this all gets complicated. Fast. Cross-sex friendships are actually shockingly recent to human history. It's really only annoyed us for the past 1% of our existence, only like a few thousand years. Before that, for the first 99% when we were mostly nomadic, there's almost no ethnographic evidence of men and women having platonic friendships. But even though we're not wired for it, socially, we are way ahead of the curve. Men and women work together, learn together, and socialize together. So if you want to thrive in the modern world, you better get good at having platonic friends. Now, at their core, friendships are a social exchange. Each of you has needs, and the trade's got to be fair. When two people's needs are very different, one person usually gets hung out to dry. Now, if you need someone to be more than a friend, but they only need a friend, you might feel trapped in a friend zone. What about if you're in a friends with benefits relationship and you develop a need for emotional support and commitment, but your partner's just content with the physical side? We so often find ourselves on one side of the fence because we only know what we need out of a friendship, but we never even think about what the other person's needs are. So today, we gathered a group of male-female friends and had them take a crack at awkwardly figuring it out. So we have here a board of needs. Okay. And we want you to consider looking over all this uh, in your friendship, what do you need out of that? What I need from our friendship. Yeah, things that you need from this friendship. Go ahead, take your time, consider what you want. When you do, just put them in a the circle, right? Okay. Go for it. Okay. That's an easy one. Criticism. Criticism. So, what do we have? Well, I have a lot of needs. I picked money, humor. Stimulating conversation. Dependability. Optimism. Romance. <laughs> In the platonic way, he's like a romantic guy. Keep me sharp and focused, okay? Criticism. And ear to complain to. And healthy competition. Okay. Since everyone was such a pro at talking about their needs, we had them take a stab at telling us what the other person needs out of the friendship. Mm. Let me see. There we go. Again, I won't overthink it. I'll just throw it on there because I could keep reshuffling many, many times. Okay. Have you ever really considered what it is that she might need out of the friendship before? Or was this the first time? This probably would be the first time. <laughs> it's kind of sad. Was it difficult to pick these five up? It was a little tougher. I feel like in friendships, it's this like system of checks and balances where it's like, all right, I want to make sure that I'm getting my needs met, and I'm not really thinking about if they have their, if they're getting their needs met. Um, so it was nice to be able to actually think about like what Matt does want from me and a friend, even if I totally ignore it. <laughs> well, I guess I've never really thought about what he needs from me. I. I guess I'm just selfish. Do you think most people only consider their own needs in a, in a relationship? Well, now I'm thinking that probably, yeah. All right, Jared, Jennifer, what we have here is two Venn diagrams. The one over here on the left, this is what each of you thinks the other person needs. And the one on the right is what you each said you yourselves need. So looking over all this information, seeing that you kind of seem to understand what each other needs, how do you think that affects your relationship with each other? I think that's probably why we're such good friends. <laughs> and that's why it's just easy being friends. That's why we're staying good friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there anything specific that you guys get out of male-female relationships that you don't get out of relationships with members of the same sex? Yeah. Just a different perspective, a different point of view. Because I really like We've had don't these conversations. Know <laughs> what's going through dudes' brains and I'd be like, Alex, what does this weird thing mean? In my female relationships I can be emotional and they get it, whereas like I think of like going out to lunch with my guy friends and they're like, mm. 
Hey, how's it going? What's up, man? Why do you think a lot of people seem to have uh, difficulty with male-female friendships? Um... It's, it's sex. It's sex, yeah. 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 Self-control. People Because hormones. Har yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think really it just basically comes down to a matter of self-control and respecting the other person so much. You don't need to try to stick your thing in every. Thank you! It, you know, <laughs> complicates things, yeah. you know what I mean? Just because one person might be attracted to the other person, you know, doesn't mean that you have to act on it, you know, if you value their friendship enough, you know? That's the big part, is um, momentary pleasure does that defeat long-term rewarding, fulfilling relationships. What we found was really interesting. Not only did almost all of these cross-sex friends feel some attraction towards each other, they had openly discussed it, and then opted to continue the friendship without moving into a romantic relationship. Why? Because they realized the benefits of these particular friendships outweighed those of a relationship. Are there benefits to just being friends that you don't get out of a, a relationship? Yeah, because there's not, I mean, there's less of a responsibility, I guess. With boyfriends, I feel like it's always like, the relationship, let's talk about the relationship, and like, make sure the relationship, what's up with our relationship, the next level, and like with you, it's like whatever. It just is what it is, you know? There's not a lot of maintenance that I have to do to like maintain a friendship with you. I'm Besides just be myself. In romantic relationships, um, where there is sex involved, a lot of times a lot of it gets shifted and get put heavily on sex. Um, to where with Jennifer and I, there's no sex involved. There is so much focus on a lot of these things that we both you know, pick because that is what we share together and all of the intensity stays right there. I love that I don't want to have sex with you. I wake up every day and I'm like, thank God I don't want to have sex with you because then we can keep being friends. You know, and you're able to fight your attraction off me. Yeah, I'm able to fight my attraction to her that I can't bear. Are you attracted to me at all? Yeah. Is this a question? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to know. I mean, I think you're, I think you're attracted. Has there ever been an attraction between you two? I'm totally attracted. He's like uh, a beautiful person. Just because it's there doesn't mean that you have to engage in it. And we are, we're open about it. Like it's not something that we try and act like doesn't exist because you know, anytime you try and suppress any emotion or anything you're thinking, it ends up just bubbling up and being even more so than what it originally is. I just think just having trust and just being open and just going with it. And just in today's time, you want good friendship with opposite sex. Attraction only breaks a friendship if you let it. Feeling attracted to somebody isn't your choice, but addressing it is. The key isn't to repress it, but to acknowledge that it exists. Whether or not you confess it to them is totally your call, but so is letting it stop you from having friends of the opposite sex. So figure out what you both need out of the friendship by considering how it looks from the other person's side. It's worth it for you to understand what's in it for them. I'm Julian, and this has been The Science of Love. Full Pancake! Subscribe!